Hello coin collectors out there. Welcome back to the Big D Coins channel. Hopefully everyone is having a great day as always. In today's video, we are going to go through one of these rolls of Lincoln pennies. These ones right here come to you from my uncle actually, who was a coin collector back in the day. And he uh, built these nice little rolls and he put uh, some unique stuff in each of them. So let's quickly uh, take a look at the different rolls that he has set aside right here. So we have some 1940s wheats at the top. Uh, 1940s had some very high year of production. So unfortunately, these aren't going to be worth too much. We have some mint marked early memorials. So there's kind of two things that made it interesting for people to collect this particular role right here. One was that they were mint marks. So he grew up on the East Coast. So most of his coins that he came across in circulation were from the Philadelphia Mint. So those wouldn't have a mint mark on them. These ones right here, however, are all going to be from the Denver or from the San Francisco Mint. Now, collecting mint mark coins actually contributed to the coin shortage in the mid-1960s. Because of that, the Mint removed the Mint Marks from 1965, 66, and 67 on all of the coins. So uh, if you hear about people hoarding Mint Marked coins, that definitely happened, as you can see by evidence by this roll right here. We also have the early memorials. Uh, whenever there's a coin change, a coin design change, uh, people like to hold on to those because they want to have the first year of that specific design change. So early memorials, mint marked coins. We have more, some more 1940s wheats right here. Uh, wheat coins are always cool to come across. And we have some 1950s wheats. Now I'm going to pop this one open right here. Um, now this one, it's not officially sealed or anything like that. Uh, but I'm going to open it up and see what's inside. See what my uncle was able to save and then we'll share with you uh, some specific years that i think you will find interesting so let me just uh open it up we'll dump them all right here i would expect these to be in kind of above average uh condition however i bet that most of them will be uh circulated he uh likely wouldn't come across any uncirculated coins as that would require a premium for you to pay them all right, so we've got a 1957 right here. We're just going to run through uh, some of the years that we see right here. And there are some key years uh, that we'll talk about. Uh, so we've got a 57 and a 58 right off the bat. 58 is the last year of the wheat years reverse right here. So the last year that you're going to see this reverse right here will be 1958. Uh, 57, we've got a 1955. I bet there'll be some other 1955s in the set right here so let me just look through these close quickly uh, we got another 1955 right here now the year 1955 is very famous for the 1955 double die the 1955 double die um, is considered by many to be the most uh, memorable double die in the entire Lincoln Cent series, maybe out of all of the coin collecting, just because of its severity. The 1955 double die was actually created when the mint struck a working hub and a working die together while they were both slightly rotated differently from one another. Consequently, this working die uh, then received double die impressions, and in return, it struck thousands of 1955 double die cents now another interesting fact is that the mint actually realized that there were some 1955 double dies before um before they had stopped shipping all the coins however the only real option for that was that they'd have to recall all of the 1955s and then melt them all down so they decided that it wouldn't really make sense to go through all of that trouble and all of that costs associated with melting down the 1955 double dies. So they just let them into circulation and it was estimated that there are anywhere from 20 to 24,000 of these that made their way into circulation. And the current rarity and survival estimate is that there are about 10,000 to 15,000 examples in existence in all grades for that 1955 double die. Uh, let's see what else I have for coins right here. We've got another 1955. We've got some interesting toning on this 1953 right here. Uh, there are a couple other years that I had in mind that I was going to hopefully come across and then be able to share with you. 
So as far as the mintage of the 1955s, so those are rather common, unfortunately. Uh, very high mintages, so unless you have that double die, it's not going to be worth more than face value. There are 330 million of them that were made at the Philadelphia Mint for the year 1955. As far as the Denver Mint, there are 563 million that were made. And then at the San Francisco Mint, just 44 million of them that were made. All right, I've also got this 1954 right here. I'm going to zoom in on it. Now, what makes the 1954 Philadelphia Mint special uh, is that it has the lowest mintage for the 1950s Philadelphia Mint. Uh, so the 1950s Philadelphia Mint, uh, the lowest mintage will be this year right here, this specific coin. There are only 71 million of them that were made. There are 71,640,050 of these coins that were produced. So if you're having trouble coming across a 1954 Philadelphia Mint, that's because the mintages on that are much lower than the other Philadelphia Mint years. Now, as far as the highest mintage year for across the board is actually the year uh, 1956 D in which there are 1 billion 98 million of them that were made. Also interesting about the 1954, if you look in the cherry pickers guide to rare die and variety coins for the year 1954, you'll come across a cool coin for this penny right here. It's known as a uh, repunched mint mark. However, it has the D over D over D. So the 1954 D has a error known out there for the triple repunched mint mark. Uh, so the triple repunch mint mark, the secondary Ds are evident to the north and the south of the primary D. So to illustrate that for you, um, this one right here doesn't have a mint mark on it. So I'll show you what a mint mark. Now these will vary a lot uh, from coin to coin as far as the actual design as far as the actual kind of uh, size and shape of the mint mark, but a repunch mint mark. So these are just two uh, generic examples of mint marks, the D mint mark. So a repunch mint mark, if you see another one for the 1954 that is kind of, uh, excuse me, north and south of the primary D right here, if you see kind of some other mint marks around that area, one north and one south, that could be the Repunch mint mark, the triple repunch mint mark, which is pretty rare. Uh, normally, you would just see a uh, one copy of a repunch mint mark, um, but very rarely do you come across the three times repunched mint mark. Now, the Cherry Picker's Guide has a value of these at fifty dollars for a mint state sixty-five, down to a uh, EF forty that will be around five dollars. AU fifty will be around ten dollars. MS sixty around twenty dollars. So. The 1954 D over D over D will be kind of valuable in any condition. And if you only have to pay a cent for it, it'll be a nice return on your investment. All right, everyone, hopefully you enjoyed this video. We talked a lot about the 1954 and about the 1955 Lincoln pennies. Thank you very much, everyone, and best of luck coin collecting out there. Enjoy.